welcome to this video here on academic literature database searches. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use some of the um, uh, advanced options to refine your searches in the so-called Web of Science database. This is actually one of several videos where I talk about how to use these databases, specifically the Web of Science. So I assume that you already came up with a certain search in your, uh, in a, in your literature search. Um, you refined your search with different operators and so on. That's what I talk about in another video here, how to use uh, these different field texts, for example, and also use Boolean algorithm uh, um, operators, uh, how to combine uh, different search terms to come up with the ideal search result. So um, I assume that you already did that. And now we start from here and take it the next step further to refine your searches. So first thing I want to show you is here in this, um, you usually start here, I'm going back to that, you start here with this basic search window, window here um, when starting with the Web of Science and I usually go with the advanced search, I mentioned that in the other video as well. And there are already some cool features here. You see here, I have a history of searches. This is what I went through with uh, in the in the other video. And that is something that already is helpful if you just want to see, okay, how did your search terms develop? You can see here the number of results of hits that you had here. If you click on any of these here, it brings you to the results screen with all the results that you had. So I'm going back here to this here. Uh, another uh, cool feature actually is that you can copy the query link here. So if you want to share your search strategies, the different search terms, different search results with somebody else, you can do it by clicking here on the link. And then the link is something that you can send to somebody else and they exact, arrive at exactly the same results that you had so that you don't have to copy paste here the search term because there's already um, or always options for any any errors there if you do that. Um, but if you really go with the link, there is nothing can go wrong if you share your searches. What you could do as well here is you can of course edit your search here and that brings you back to this um, a search window here and again I said uh, or mentioned how you can do that, how you can come up with different search strategies in the other video. Uh, discarding that here. So and uh, finally something that you can do here is you can create also an alert. So if you have a refined search strategy and that yielded the relevant results for you and if you want to get noticed if something new pops up in the literature, new uh, in the database, new literature pops up in the database, you can create an alert here for specifically or for some specific of your searches so that the database uh, uh, tells you when there's something new in the database and you can also uh, combine different sets here of um, of searches, but I usually don't use that feature. I do it then by hand to minimize any any um, errors in combining these database searches. But you can do that here um, and add different queries to another one um, as well. But I, as I said, I usually don't use that too much. So um, let's just jump right into one of these searches here to show you how you can further refine searches with different options. So just like take that one here, the organization here. Here is basically the um, this uh, results window that you see here. I've searched in the title for the term organization here. Um, and as, again, um, have a look at the other video if you're interested, um, how you can refine that with different operators and so on. So one thing that I wanted to show you first is in refining the results, it's, it's already back in the search window here. So I was looking for the organization here in the title and you had that here, uh, that, that's the one that we were looking at. And you saw that we had about 150,000 results already. And here's the first interesting aspect. The Web of Science database has different um, parts, so to say, in it. It has the so-called Science Citation Index, the Social Science Citation Index, the Arts and Humanities Citations, and the Emerging Sources. Um, I'm a management scholar sustainability management specifically, sustainability management and um, management in general is a social science. So when I'm uh, looking for literature, I usually only go for the social science citations index because I'm not interested uh, in when talking about 
organizations or, for example, consumers, how they behave or whatever. Uh, I'm not interested in natural sciences and also not in arts and humanities. Uh, and this is why I restrict my search to that database. Um, if you are in natural science, for example, you can do it exactly the other way around. Or you can, of course, select all. Just to show you uh, the, the difference that that makes, if I'm going for just for the social science citations index and search again, we end up with less than half the results of the original results when searching for uh, the term organization. And that is um, simply by restricting the database further in what types of journals it is looking at. So that would be already a first option how you can um, yeah, limit your search if you yield too many um, irrelevant results for you. Of course, you have to be careful when doing that. See that nothing is excluded that's relevant for you, um, but that might be an option. Um, what you could then do is, um, that is something that is really helpful usually uh, when looking through the um, results here, you can sort it differently. Usually, our, the um, default option is sort by relevance. So in this case, the database sorts the literature in a way that it thinks that the most relevant hits uh, pop up first. Um, that is something that is really helpful if you just want to get a first glimpse of literature and get an idea of the most important, um, um, yeah, the most important hits um, from your search. So that is something that is really helpful in the beginning if you just want to get an idea. Is, is there anything relevant in the search that helps me with my topics? So that is something here that you can then sort by relevance. You can then also use tons of different other sorting methods here by publication title, for example, by first author, uh, names, uh, sorted differently, citations, date, and so on and so on. Uh, something that I often use is also date, newest first, just by uh, sorting by date. In this case, it's not um, uh, screwed by, by, by relevance or whatever, but in this case, it time, sometimes helps you if you want to do a, a systematic literature review, for example, um, to um, just go through the first few hits and see how good or bad in general your search term is. So um, how many relevant results does it yield uh, in general? And also in this case, it gives you, of course, the, the newest literature and so on. So that would be something that here uh, might be relevant for you uh, by sorting, just sorting uh, the the literature in the uh, in the hits here. Something that you can then also do is you can refine your results, and that's what you do here in the left part of the screen. And you have various filters which you can use to refine your search results. So in our case here, we have uh, more than sixty thousand results because it's really broad search here to searching for organization um, and we assume that that's just too much for us to digest so what you could do is you can have here some quick filters i'm going uh, to to pass them here uh, start uh, below here so you can for example um, uh, have a look at some years here and in this case you can see here uh, how many hits per year uh, the database uh, search resulted. For example, 2022, we had about 2,000 um, publications with a title organization or uh, with organization in the title and about 240 in uh, 1950, um, 65 already or 56, sorry. So in this case, you can, if you want to, and if you have a topic that you know that is relevant only from a specific amount of time, for example, if you're searching for some uh, effects of new regulations on whatever, and you knew that that regulation uh, was um, uh, in, uh, introduced in a specific year, then probably you can exclude some earlier years uh, from your list because then these searches were not relevant for you. And you can then say exclude these years or what you can do the other way around if you can uh, say okay i only want to have some specific years just the, i don't know the newest 10 years or whatever then you can um, highlight them and then refine to so exclude exclude certain options refine restrict to certain options so that would be something that you can use here then you have the document type here, document type, it's a different types of, of um, items that are actually in the database. And what I most often use is article when I'm searching for um, a 
academic literature, um, sometimes you can exclude or exclude review articles, um, proceedings paper, depends on the discipline you're in, if you're interested in conference proceedings or not. Um, you can go for early access articles here. These are the ones that are published online only first and not in a specific issue, print issue of a um, a certain um, uh, journal. Uh, you can look for book chapters if you're interested in or exclude again book chapters if that's something that's not, rele not relevant for you and so on. So that already gives you a good idea of what type of literature is in your search and as I said um, I usually use the, the articles, the um, um, scientific articles uh, and focus on that one but that's something that I do. What you could do is you could search by specific researchers. Uh, if relevant for you, you can also go for Web of Science categories. However, um, please see that if you were looking at a specific sub-database here, in this case the Social Science Citations Index or the Science Citations or whatever, there you already basically did a first narrowing down with regards to topics. In this case here, journals in the area of social sciences. Huh? So if you want to restrict that further, you can then see, okay, in the social science, this is obviously vast, and then you can, for example, refine here to business and management, uh, or you can exclude, I don't know, archaeology, if uh, that's something that you're not interested in your research results and so on. That's something that might be helpful in that regard. Um, I'm not going through each and every one of these because some are just finer issues here. Publication titles, that is the, um, the journal uh, usually that, uh, or a book or a conference or whatever where the um, different items were published. So there is a journal called Organization Studies. If you just want to have um, articles from that specific journal, you can refine it or you can also, of course, exclude it again. Language is something that might be interesting for you. I usually restrict it to English language. Um, I, I could do German as well. I'm a German native, but I, in this case, unfortunately, I couldn't do French, uh, Russian, and Spanish, and whatever. So, I mean, as English is usually the language of science, I usually refine it to English language. But again, that's something that's up to you. And the rest here, you can play around a bit with that. That is something that is pretty specific, but I usually don't do that too much. I mean, with um, with publishers, you, you, you could do that. Um, there are some publishers that are questionable. Um, I'm, I'm uh, actually criticizing some publishers um, quite a bit in, in, in social media. So if you want to exclude them specifically because they are near predatory or whatever, you can do that as well. And the others are, as I said, more finer issues that are usually not too relevant if, if, um, if you're doing a general search. Okay, what else can you do? Um, you can, uh, in this case here, with this um, hits list here, you can um, uh, mark certain hits that might be relevant for you and add them to a specific list if that's helpful for you. And what I think is much more important, you can export a list, for example, um, as an Excel file. Uh, or whatever to work further with that later on, especially if you have a large search. I mean, that is something here that is probably not um, feasible for any uh, real literature review. So you have to go for a refined search anyways and adjust your search term here. But you can export your entire search in different formats here to work further on it, to analyze the literature. Um, and that also helps. What you can do as well is you can um, have a look at specific um, um, at specific uh, titles here, items here. For example, we have here an article that was found, and we can go through to the. Uh, wait a second, why did that not work? Uh, see, that is something that happens usually when you want to show something. So I can go again for that. Oh. Why does that not work? See, that is some or sometimes the misery of these or the the mystery of these databases. Uh, let's go here, show more, and there, or you give a good idea. I mean, basically, that's uh, all the information you need. But usually, if you click on that one, it should work and give you all the details of that specific article. Not the full article, though, but uh, the, the main information on a specific page. But you can see here, most of that is already. Um, 
relevant here um, uh, in, in this window here. You can see the title here, you can see the authors here, the, the publication date, then you have here the journal, issue, pages, you have the abstract here, and that gives you a good idea. If you want to just screen the first ones, for example, for relevance uh, manually, you can read through the abstracts and so on. You can then also click here full text at publisher that brings you to the website usually of the journal and then you can see whether you have access to the full text uh, and so on. And then finally what I think is really interesting as well is here the uh, citations and references. Uh, if you, for example, do not only want to do a database search in terms of a keyword search here, in this case here for organization as I did it, but if you want to add further search strategies, one um, search strategy is a forward and backward search. Um, that means that you look at um, who, who are these citing? So we have here the article by Arne and Brunson and they have 78 references in their article, so they are citing 78 articles um, from the Web of Science database that you can then look at. So you can specifically have a look at these ones. Uh, so these are the articles that they cite in their paper. Uh, so you can look through that if it's interesting for you. And you can also have a look at who cites these papers. So the article by Arne and Brunson from the year 2011 has already cited 250 uh, times from other articles in the Web of Science database and if you click on that one here you find all the articles that cite this specific articles and that is really helpful for a so-called forward and backward search. And of course you can click on many of these uh, other aspects as well so if you think that one is an interesting article let's have a look at what the authors uh, um, published as well then you can click on the on the author names here you can click for example on the uh, journal uh, name here to have a look at the journal if that's interesting for you and you can also have a look here for example at the so-called related records and in this case the the database gives you an idea of what it, it of what the database thinks might be also relevant for you so that is something if you just want to explore it a bit that might be helpful uh, for you as well. Okay, I think that's it about the most important uh, further elements here, apart from the keyword search, which I um, uh, did in the in the other video. That's most important for you, and that might be helpful for you to refine your search and to work with these databases.